I look forward to this being the first of many annual conferences. I wish to take a moment to announce the official endorsement of the National Black Republican Association of Senator John McCain to be President of the United States. Uh, there's lots of misperceptions about the Republican Party and the history of the Republican Party with regards to race and gender. In 1866, Congress did pass uh, the Civil Rights Act. Many people think about 64, but 1866 was actually the first one. Uh, and the Reconstruction Act, basically dissolving the governments of the Confederacy, um, and, and except for Tennessee was the only one that, that wasn't dissolved. And it required that the Confederate states give citizenships to African Americans. Again, all this was pushed by uh, Republicans. Um, so just, just please keep this in mind as I'm talking. Yes, the Civil War was a war between the North and the South. But it was also a war between Democrats and Republicans. And thank God, the Republicans won. And if the Democrats had left blacks alone after they were freed and given their rights, we would not be having this conversation today. But the Democrats set for themselves a horrendous task of trying to keep blacks in poverty, in virtual slavery, and Republicans out of power. Now, the Green Movement, which I call Club Green, is a major political force. Its members include powerful nonprofit groups, left-wing politicians, and surprisingly some corporations. They also have Hollywood celebrities supporting this cause, like Robert Redford and Leonardo DiCaprio, just to name a few. We should not accept the sacrifices or a lower standard of living to appease the hobbies and causes of elitists who worship rocks, trees, and animals over the welfare of human beings. This election season, I want to remind you, is critical regarding how we are going to address urban policy issues in this century because the Democrat Party is insistent to revisit the failed tax and spend policies of the Johnson administration and its war on poverty. It, regarding family breakdown, uh, the need talked a minute about the family breakdown that has occurred because once Democrats got a hold of black family life and began swelling the welfare state, at that point, uh, when looking at family life, black out of wedlock birth rate was about 22%, today it's 68%. And this um, idea of, of, of expanded government and the lives of individuals, and you couple that with a moral relativism and an entitlement mentality, it is an equal opportunity destroyer. And we're starting to see the same pathologies that destroy black family life it, it start to increase in white family life as adequate like birth rates in the 60s were at 3%, today they're at 33%. Unfortunately, No Child Left Behind expired under Democrat leadership in the Congress, and they They've decided that they're not going to have any hearings nor discussion on this monumental piece of legislation until after November with the hopes that they will be able to dismantle all of the gains that are occurring under this piece of legislation. One specific gain that is occurring is we for the first time in history of, of federal intrusion into educational policy have seen the gap with nine-year-old black and Hispanic children close with their white counterparts. We are starting to see, for those that keep saying, well, they're just teaching to the test, that teaching to the test is working for black boys. There has to be something that binds any civilization together. There have to be rules that society follows to govern itself. There have to be things that we all believe in. And the notion that you and I, when we interact with our government, should be treated the same is probably the most fundamental belief that we can have. More than any other people, black people, we have fought for that principle over the years. We have contributed more than anyone else to the notion that people should not be judged on the basis of skin color. The propositions that I have fought for over the last 13 years are really very simple and very direct. Quote, the state shall not discriminate against or grant preferential treatment to any individual or group on the basis of race, sex, color, ethnicity, or national origin. 
in the operation in the operation of public employment, public education, or public contracting. There are some forms of affirmative action that are good. When we're trying to make sure that the government is not discriminating, that's good affirmative action. When the government treats me differently than anybody in this room, that's not affirmative action if it's done on the basis of how we were born. Anyone is capable of mistreating somebody else on the basis of race. But it's our duty as Americans, as fellow Americans, to say we won't tolerate that. 